Hello, my name is Mark. I am a Bible teacher. I want to give you uh, revelations and interpretations as they've been given to me. Today I want to talk to you about why uh, the lukewarm are not condemned. Okay, I'm going to do a series of videos. Don't know how many, but I'm going to go launch into this again uh, today. I want to read it real quick. It says in 315, Revelation 315, I know thy works, thou art neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot, so that because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, I am increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and no, you don't know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I want to say that the Lord has revealed to me that this is uh, a conceitedness. I am rich, I'm increased with goods, and I have need of nothing. That's a conceited statement. That's, a, that's what flesh and blood reveals. And it is being rebuked. Uh, I have written up here, this is um, 319. Revelation 319. As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. What are you repenting of? You're repenting of um, being conceited. Uh, drawing your identity in uh, what you possess. Jesus uh, also gave the lesson that uh, our, our, our lives do not consist in the abundance of what we possess. That's not who we are. Um, but there, it, is the, it, is a, it is a temptation when you are increased with goods and when you have money, uh, if money is power, if money is glory, and it is, uh, to take your identity in that. And to be uh, close, this, before you exalt yourself, you feel pretty good about yourself, right? You're, li you're lifted up. The Bible says if you have an evil thought or if you're lifted up, put your hand over your mouth. Which means your way out is to not speak it forth. These people, or this person, because it's written in the, uh, as an individual, they were proclaiming, I am rich, I'm increased with goods, and I have need of nothing. Which is, uh, uh, it's also a self-sufficiency. Um... But this is, this is being rebuked. If you are lukewarm, if you become conceited, you are in danger of being rebuked. You, what, what you're saying to the Lord is not being received. This is, uh, this is a time, there was a time when, when Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they responded and they said that the people or men are saying that you're, you're John the Baptist, you're, you're Elijah, you're uh, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he immediately pivoted, maybe graciously, and he said, well, but who do you say that I am? Peter spoke up and he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, blessed are thou Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And, um, and I want to stop there and, and look back at these words. This is what flesh and blood reveals. These are the thoughts of men uh, without prayer, uh, speaking of the, the identity uh, of the Lord, and they, they were all wrong, and these were all not taken in. Okay, now if you, I want to try to uh, persuade you to believe that Jesus uh, eats and drinks. Okay, he spoke to Nicodemus, and he said to him, "You know, if if I have uh, spoken to you of, of earthly things and you believe not, how are you going to believe if I speak to you of heavenly things?" So, and he spoke to him about being born again, born, born a second time. So, and Nicodemus thought in the natural, oh, you want me to crawl back into my mother's womb a second time? He said, no, that's not what he was speaking. But Jesus does uh, relate things uh, in the natural to the spiritual. So things like giving a cup of cold water, that's, there's a spiritual uh, definition to that. There's a spiritual dynamic to that. And I will speak about that. I'm not going to speak about that today. That's another video for another time. But that is the cold. Jesus is asking for a cup of cold water. And, and he is the inasmuch uh, that you have done unto these, you have done it unto me, a person. That's who he is. I mean, if you do something for somebody that he loves, it's almost like doing it for him. It's pretty close, right? Because that's what, that's what the verdict is in Matthew 25. That when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. So I want to try to impress upon you uh, that this is, this is something that he, will not, he won't take in the lukewarm. And, and it is because 
in lukewarm conditions, in lukewarm water, if you're making bread from scratch, that is the only condition in which the leavening action takes place. And that is what lukewarm is. That is what lukewarm is. Uh, so if you're trying to make bread from scratch, if you put uh, water in a bowl and you put some honey and sugar in it and then you added leaven or yeast into it, if it were cold, it's not going to activate. The yeast will not feast on the, on the sugar or the honey. And, and the same thing with hot. If it's over 140 degrees, uh, all yeast will, will die. So you could say that the, that the yeast or the leaven is like the Goldilocks. It's like the Goldilocks of water temperature. Uh, this one's too cold, this one's too hot, this one's just right. It feeds in lukewarm water. 108 degrees is your ideal uh, water temperature for, for the leavening action to take place. And that, uh, my friends, that is exactly what the Lord is saying right there. Jesus does not eat leavened bread. He is the unleavened bread. If you're confused about that, read, read in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. It talks about uh, uh, the Passover feast being Jesus. Je and, and it says that the unleavened bread is the bread of sincerity and truth. And the Apostle Paul always wrote about leaven in the negative. I hope you don't believe that there's any good leaven. There is not. Let's, let me put it this way. It's best to be unleavened like Jesus is. And we should take our identity in Christ. Amen? I just want to make the point. Uh, here's my final point as to why the spewing out is not condemnation. And there's a number of, number of ministers that are taking this stance. Uh, I mean, this, this one goes back 40 years for me. I, quote unquote, was, was deceived by that when I first he heard it. I want to say this is the spirit of religion that unjustly condemns. And, and, and you, you ought to know that the, that the uh, accuser of the brethren loves to condemn those that are saved. We know that there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ, according to the scripture. Here's, here's the best argument if we were arguing or debating. It says in, in Revelation 3.21, read it, to him that overcome it, uh, I won't spit you out of my mouth. Is that what it says? No, it doesn't say that. It says, to him that overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I overcame and I sat down with my father in his throne. Which means that Jesus was tempted to become conceited, but he did not. Here, here's, here's the same, here, <clears throat> here's a salvation issue. Go to 3.5, Revelation 3.5. He that overcomes, the same will be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the uh, book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. That's a salvation issue. That's a warning. That they were being tempted uh, by reason of uh, physical harm and or death. They're being uh, tempted to, to not confess him. They, there were people trying to force Christians to say, you know, deny that Jesus is the Savior. Deny that he's your Savior. And that was their test. They, they needed to confess him at, at the risk of physical harm and or death, which is a great test. Um, but but that, was, that was what they were looking at. And, and that's a salvation issue. I will not blot your name out of the book of life, but I will confess your name before my Father, right? Uh, Jesus promised those that confess him on earth as their Savior, he will confess your name before the Father and before the holy angels. If you deny him, he will deny you. That's not what he wants to do. He wants to confess your name before the Father and before the holy angels. Just remember that concerning the lay of the sins, that is a salvation issue in 3.5. In 3.21, it is not. Do you think that he neglected? You think he forgot uh, to add that, to talk about, you know, that, oh, I won't spew you out? No, he didn't forget. It's not a salvation issue. It is a rebuke. As many as I love, I rebuke. You're being rebuked. Those, those words that were, speak, that, were, that, were, that were spoken, he's saying, I don't accept that. It's like, don't talk, <clears throat> talk, don't say those things in my kingdom. That, that kind of speech is not acceptable in my kingdom. You can't come to the Lord and tell him that you're greater than anybody else, if, that, if that's what you wanted to do. You can't do that. James and John tried to do that. They came and they said, let us sit on the left and the right of you when you come into your kingdom. They came with their mother one day and said, grant us to, to sit on your throne on the left and right of you. And the other ten were indignant at that. So you can't, you can't come and exalt yourself without being abased, okay? But before you exalt yourself, you have a pretty good opinion of yourself. 
And that's what he's rebuking. He says, you know, don't have this elevated opinion of yourself. Uh, don't come to me with what flesh and blood reveals. This is uh, Galatians 6, 3. If any man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, you know, he deceives himself. That's what was going on here. You know, uh, you say that you're rich, you're increased with goods, and you have need of nothing. And you don't know that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And, and, and what does God do? He, he rebukes you. He loves you. You're not, you're, not, you're not going to hell. It's not condemnation. We need to, I, I want to say, that is the quote-unquote spirit of religion. When people have surmised, you know, if, if, you, if you look at anything in Scripture and fear grips you, you're not discerning. Fear is a darkness, right? If you, if you were to look at a, at a diamond in total darkness and somebody were to say, what colors do you see? Well, you say, I, I can't see anything. It's, it's, we're in the dark. So yeah, you have to go in the light. You have to be free of that darkness. And then when you look at the diamond, then you can say, oh, it's got, whoa, it's got red, blue, yellow, you know. Right? And then you can discern, you can see. Be free of the fear. Be free of the fear, okay? I, I know that, that, that's, that might sound, I mean, a lot of Christians are coming to the places like, wait a minute, we're not condemned. These are believers, too. I don't know how people look into that and say, oh, the Church of Laodiceans, oh, those are all unbelievers. No, no, that's really bad. That's really bad preaching, okay? Because the other six churches were all churches of believers. They're all ecclesias, and there are other letters from, from the Church of Laodicea, and there's all kinds of arguments as to why that's, that's wrong. Anyways, I'm going to end this video for now. I just want to say, don't accept that. If you're lukewarm, you're going to be rebuked. You're in danger of being rebuked. You're in danger of being chastened. And if you're chastened, you need to understand this. The chastening is only for sons, only for daughters, only for those that belong to God. Remember that. He loves you, right? He loves you. He's going to rebuke you. And I hope that if you are rebuked, you know it comes from love. I hope that if you are chastened, that you know it comes from love. That, that's, that's who God is, right? Amen? Okay, I'm going to close here. Let's be free. I'm, I'm on part, I mean, part of what I'm doing, I'm trying to discern what is of God, right? You, you only put oil on unleavened wafers. You do not put oil on uh, leavened bread. So in other words, if somebody gives you uh, leavened bread, there's no oil. There's no anointing upon it by the Holy Spirit. But if you speak the word of God, the unleavened uh, uh, word of God, there's an anointing upon it. And therein is the difference uh, between uh, the Holy Spirit and the quote-unquote spirit of religion. And that's all nice and complicated, and it's part of the, uh, the deceptions of the last days. But God is greater, right? The light is greater than the darkness. God's wisdom is greater than the world's wisdom. God's wisdom is far greater uh, than the devil's wisdom, right? There is no wisdom. There's no counsel. There's no understanding against the Lord as it says in Proverbs. Okay, I'm going to end here. I'm going to say thank you for watching. If you want to like, subscribe, or, uh, or uh, what was the other one? Oh, comment. If you want to make some comments, that would be great. I'll, I will reply. And I want to thank you for watching. God bless you. I will see you in the next video.